Hello and welcome to the long-awaited tutorial on how to rip armor core for answer models. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to rip armor core for answer models. Uh, everything you're going to need for the ripping will be in the description below along with a text tutorial if you don't want to listen to my annoying voice. And I'm only going to be talking about how to rip and texture the models that we get. I'm not going to go in depth about how we rig them. That's a lot of people should know how to do it, and I've done enough streams where I've rigged robots before. So anyway, let's just uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Okay, first things first. Let's get let's find where the models are. So if you've downloaded Armor Core for Answer off any site where it is a folder, and you're just gonna go to your game, go here, here. We're not going to go to model, we're going to go to bin, and then we go to model down here, and then in garage we will find all the parts that are seen in the garage or ACES. Okay, let's start off with locating the models. First I want to say Yabber works on pretty much every BND in Armor Core for Answers files. Yabber also works on other files like FMG which hold uh, closed caption text, so if ever want to mod armor core for answer in the future, Yabber is a requirement. Um, so let's start by opening our Yabber folder with the Yabber exe inside. And then we're going to open up where we keep our models and textures. And we're just going to drag in the BNB onto Yabber, which will automatically unpack it. As you can see here, there it's the FLV holding the model. We'll do the same with the texture. Oops. Do the same with the texture, and there you go. Now you got the PPFs. Okay, let's set up Neosis and get the textures for our models. So first you're going to open up your Neosis folder, and in there you're going to open up a file named Plugins. In that file you're going to open up another file called Python. In here you can drag and drop your Demon Souls TPF script into the Python folder, and that's pretty much it. Uh, once done with that, you can then open up Neosis, and um, let's locate where we unpacked our texture BNB. Once there, once you find your textures, you can right click and hit export, bring this little pop up, and in here we can tell it where to go, what name we want it, whatever, and then here we can also tell it what type of image we want it to be. Uh, once that's all done, we can hit export and we're done. No more. We got we got the texture. Let's set up 3ds Max and Fat Importer so we can finally rip some models. First, you're gonna want to install 3ds Max, obviously, and you're gonna need to agree to the uh, license agreement. No one reads it, but whatever. Um, now, if you're using 2010 3ds Max uh, to start your trial, you just fill the serial number with a bunch of zeros. Um, since I'm using the 2012 uh, version of Max, I just need to click the I want to try this button and it'll start my trial. Now uh, we click next and everything will be downloading. This can take a while so be patient. Once everything is done installing, you can open up the 3DS Max app. Um, it's going to ask you for your email. You don't have to do this so you can just ignore it. Um, at the top of 3ds Max, you will see a drop-down bar, and at the top there will be something called Max Scripts. If you open it, there will be another thing to click called Run Max Scripts, and it'll open up a window. In here, it'll show us three folders. Let's close those up for now, and let's open our program files in the file explorer. Uh, this is where 3ds Max has all of its fancy schmancy stuff inside. Uh, here we can drag and drop the fat importer folder into the scripts folder in the Autodesk thing. And once that's done, we can then go back to the run max script thing we saw earlier. And then we can click fat importer, go all the way down here, click fat importer again, and boom. Now we can start importing models. Okay, let's finally get to ripping some models. Uh, once Fat Importer is open, you can click this little drop down and then click Armor Core for Answer. 
There will be a picture of White Glint, so click the beautiful boy. And it'll open up a window. Here you're going to locate where your unpacked model BND is. Uh, Fat Importer by default is set to animation files for some reason, so just switch it to uh, FLV. Um, you'll see your model, click the file, open the file, and boom. You just ripped the uh, Armor Core for Answer model. So now we're going to export the model. Come over here to export and it's going to ask for a destination. You can also choose what it exports as. Never export it as an FBX or day. The armatures are super broken. Like, like you're not going to fix it. You're not going to make it look good ever. Export it as an OBJ. It's not going to have a skeleton. So you're going to have to rig it yourself in the future. But rigging robots is super easy. It's just a bunch of solid weights. Okay, let's start texturing and coloring our model that we just ripped. So let's come over here into Blender and let's import our Wavefront OBJ. We're gonna find where our model is, which is here. And then we're just gonna import it. So there it is. Uh, we're gonna then head over to the Shader tab and we're gonna add the base color. The base color is the gray texture that doesn't really have much going on. It's not very fancy. Now duplicate it and then get the plot. Plot is the texture with the black and white look and stuff. That kind of looks like a box. And then we're going to add a mix node, set to color, set to overlay, plug the alpha channel into the bottom of the overlay, duplicate that, and set it to multiply. It should be right there. And we're going to get a color ramp. We're going to plug the color ramp into the color of the plot plug it into the bottom of multiply, and then we're going to set it to constant. So now we're going to slide this around, and we're going to try finding like all the colors that we see that are available to us in game. So this goes for primary, secondary, optional, device, joint, eye, etc. So all the fun stuff. Here we can color it to be whatever wacky colors you want. Setting it to these colors because I don't know I'm just trying to show show off um, so next things we're gonna do is we are going to get the specular the specular is the dark black um, texture with the white highlights and we're gonna plug that into the specular uh, my models I don't plug the specular map into just the specular I do some fancy stuff to make it look better but you can always just do that uh, next thing is the normal. Normal is the purple looking map, which is kind of weird looking. We're going to set it to non-color, and then we are going to get the uh, normal map. Once we have the normal map node, we're going to get the RGB curve node, and we're going to set the green. We're going to invert the green. Oh, God. Stop it. We're going to invert the green. Because if we don't, ever the the panel lines will be bulging instead of dented. And then there we go. We got a fully textured model. Let's talk about how Armor Core for Answer stores its files. When you're getting your models, you've probably noticed that none of the parts are properly named. They're just numbered. Now I'm pretty sure this is done so the game can call upon the files easier. Uh, Matsy can correct me in the comments, but even though they're not named, that doesn't mean they're not sorted. The models are sorted by company, not part. So this is determined by the first two numbers of the four number sequence. So on screen right now is a list of all the companies and their uh, corresponding number. Another thing I have yet to talk about is how to know what is inside a BND. There's three BNDs for the parts. And it's pretty simple. Um, at the end of the BND, there is a letter. M is for model, T is for texture, and A is for animation. Pretty simple. Okay, let's talk about what Fat Importer struggles to do. Now, as we know, Fat Importer is great at ripping necks, but once you start to step outside of the garage and start ripping map pieces, enemies, objects, breakables, whatever, that's when Fat Importer starts to break. Fat Importer, for the most part, can rip every enemy in the game, no problem, 
except for 002-B which causes the script to crash. This is the same thing for objects where you can rip pretty much every object like buildings, roads, etc. But when it comes to the roads on line art, that importer tends to crash. Now it is possible to rip these things as seen by Adam's Archive who also did a big rip of all of Armor Core for answer, but I have yet to do it. Another thing that Fat Importer hates is large objects, things like buildings, arms forts, map pieces, roads, and 00 Aretha. And what I mean by this is the UVs tend to break. So they get stretched, they get pulled, they get big, whatever. Now it's possible to fix these if you're patient enough, but I personally, I don't really care to do it, so, but you can. And I think that's going to do it for the tutorial. Um, sorry this took so long to make. I've been sitting on doing a tutorial for a long time because of a bunch of personal projects I've had lined up and I finally caught a break so I decided to pump out a tutorial. This the editing in this isn't very good. It's very rushed because again I, I wanted to pump this out as fast as possible to um, get you guys your tutorial that you've long been waiting for. Um, I'll be answering any questions in the comments, so if you have anything like what, why did I skip this step, or why did I do this, I'll, I'll answer them, so, yeah. Uh, bye guys, uh, enjoy the models.